I've been speedrunning for 20 years, but I've never seen a race quite like this. I don't think there has ever been a battle as intense, as hard fought, or as close as the battle to complete Super Mario Odyssey in less than one hour. From day one, it seemed like this goal was at the forefront of everyone's mind. Every single New World Record was cherished. Every second saved was a huge deal as it brought the world record closer and closer to the sub one hour. The last year has been pretty crazy for Odyssey speedrunning. At the beginning of 2019, the sub one hour was tantalizingly close. Multiple runners were grinding daily to be the first to beat the game in under 60 minutes. In March, it finally happened. Super Mario Odyssey was beaten in 59 minutes and 59 seconds, an absolutely huge milestone in the speedrunning community. In order to celebrate this achievement, we are going to take a brief look back at the major players in this epic race, and have a look at some of the breakthroughs that made it possible. So sit back and relax as we take a quick stroll down memory lane. Super Mario Odyssey was released on the 27th of October 2017, and from the very first minute speedrunners got their hands on the game, they were pushing to see just how fast they could complete it. The first official world record was posted on the very same day of its release, a time of 1 hour, 53 minutes, and 46 seconds by the speedrunner Monkey King Hero. Obviously, the strategies were basic but speedrunners immediately had a sense of how to play the game in order to get to the end as fast as possible. In Odyssey, we see Mario traveling from kingdom to kingdom collecting power moons. Once a certain amount of moons are collected, Mario is granted access to the next kingdom. There are ample moons to collect in each kingdom, more than you need to progress to the next. For example, in the Cascade Kingdom, one of the first worlds Mario visits, there are 25 total moons available to collect, but you only need five in order to travel to the next area, the Sand Kingdom. So the obvious question becomes, which five moons should we collect in order to complete the kingdom in the quickest possible manner? This theme of figuring out which moons to collect and which paths to take will shape the entire speedrun. Storylines and side quests are skipped whenever possible. We have but one goal, collect the bare minimum amount of power moons required and leave as soon as possible. The original world record set on day one was never fated to last long. Over the next month, the record was beaten almost daily. Quite a few speedrunners dipped their finger into the world record pie. Runners such as I Am Tendo, Valu, Iwabi74, Samurai Man, and Shaden all lowered the record at some point. It wasn't until late December that the Odyssey world record saw some semblance of stability. On the 19th of December, the speedrunner Shaden set a time of 1 hour, 5 minutes, and 14 seconds. The world record had been lowered pretty quickly from almost 2 hours down to barely over 1 hour. But it was here that progress really started to halt. This most recent record would hold strong for 22 days, which was a massive stretch for the time. The game had been out for just under 2 months, but already speedrunners were abusing movement mechanics in order to clip out of bounds. One particularly useful technique is called an instant roll cancel. This is executed by first performing a ground pound in order to get Mario into his rolling animation, but then immediately cancelling it by throwing Cappy. Cappy, of course, is the name for Mario's hat. Instant roll cancels can be used to clip Mario straight through walls. This is used at various points throughout the game to lower the amount of time it takes to get to certain moons. One specific example is called the Sphinx Clip. Clipping through this wall allowed speedrunners to enter the vault without speaking to the Sphinx first, saving around 10 seconds. Over the next several months, the world record would be regularly lowered. February 2nd of 2018 saw the first world record from speedrunner Nicro Vita, the time of 104.20. Up until this time, Shaden had remained pretty dominant, holding the world record for all but one day of the previous two months. But Nicro's new world record was extremely strong, and actually remained the record for an entire month. It's still the third longest lasting world record until this day, which is pretty crazy considering just how unoptimized those early days were. Shaden did eventually fight back, achieving a 103.58 on March 2nd. 
and would then lower the world record again to 103.47 on the 5th of March. This would be the last world record that Shaden set, and it would only last a single day. On the 6th of March, Nike Vita hit back with a 103.33. Nike's new record marked a very important change in the rules for the Any% Percent leaderboard. Any% Percent, of course, simply means beating the game as quickly as possible. The change in rules pertained to allowing certain skips that were only possible in the very first version of the game. You see, Super Mario Odyssey was receiving patch updates by Nintendo, which sometimes affected certain mechanics. For an easy to understand example, we are going to look at a skip that was found when the game was initially released, called the First Moon Skip. At the beginning of Cascade Kingdom, it is intended for Mario to get his very first moon by capturing a chain chomp and using it to break a set of rocks. Once the moon is collected, a stone structure falls across the basin forming a bridge, providing a path to the rest of the kingdom. This first moon essentially acts as a tutorial, and before Mario collects his first moon, the rest of the kingdom is supposed to be inaccessible. But you can actually reach the other side of the basin by using very, very precise movement. This skip saves a bunch of time, 25 seconds if done well. The skip itself can be done on any version of the game, but the problem arises when Mario faces the boss at the top of the falls. In the original version of the game, 1.0, the boss fight could be activated at any time, but in the updated version, 1.1, it was made so that the boss fight could only be activated once the very first moon was collected. This meant that you could no longer skip getting the first moon. This update came three days after the first release of the game, meaning that all subsequent downloads wouldn't be able to take advantage of the first moon skip. In order to attempt to even the playing field, it was decided to ban the skip from use in the Any% Percent category. But then in February of 2018, the game was updated again to 1.2. In this version, even more techniques were made impossible, including the Sphinx clip that we talked about earlier. It was at this point that it was decided to stop regulating which tricks were and were not allowed, and players were free to use whichever strategies were available to them. Nike Vita's 103.33 was the first world record where the first moon skip was reintroduced. Shaden was an absolute legend in the early days of Odyssey speedrunning. However, he did not have access to the original version of the game, and so was now playing at a slight disadvantage. March would see his very last personal best set in the Any% Percent category. Nicro would continue to push the game further. He lowered the record multiple times, eventually bringing it down to 102.48 on the 20th of April. Ten days later, the speedrunner Sui Sega entered the equation with a time of 102.46. It's here that we first saw the implementation of a new jump in the Snow Kingdom, saving 10 seconds. This jump was known to be possible since 2017, but it was never used in runs as it was far too precise, and there wasn't yet a good setup to get it consistently. But in April, a setup was indeed found, and top runners began using the strategy in every run. Over the next several months, Nicro and Sui Sega would trade world records. Overall movement was becoming much more optimized. In June, a brand new glitch was discovered called the Moon Clip. By throwing Cappy at a very precise moment before collecting certain moons, it was possible to glitch out of bounds. This enabled several much faster routes that ended up saving a huge amount of time. By July 26th, Nicro Vita held the record with a time of 101.46, but we were about to see a brand new Odyssey powerhouse enter the fray. On July 31st, the speedrunner Lil Curb set a new world record with a time of 101.42. Over the next two months, there was a three-way battle, with Nicro Vita, Sui Sega, and Lil Curbs each taking turns to lower the record. In August, another brand new clip was found in Lake Kingdom. This allowed for a different route that, once optimized, saved around 7 seconds. October saw two pretty important developments in the journey to sub 1 hour. The first was a much, much easier way to execute the first moon skip we talked about previously. Before this moment, this skip was actually pretty hard to pull off consistently, and was the cause for many resets. Now, it was basically free. The second was the very first Sub-101 by the speedrunner Chaos Pringle. On the 15th of October, he achieved a time of 1 hour and 58 seconds. It was at this point that it became pretty obvious that the Sub-1 hour was inevitable. 
but people were unsure exactly how long it would take to achieve. Chaos Pringle is a monster at the game and went on a complete rampage. By November 19th, he had lowered the record to 1 hour and 41 seconds. His path of destruction was temporarily halted by the speedrunner Equanimity, who achieved a time of 1 hour and 38 seconds on December 2nd. This was to be Equanimity's only world record, as several weeks later, Chaos Pringle started steamrolling again, achieving multiple new records. By February 10th, Chaos had lowered the record down to 1 hour and 20 seconds, extremely close to the 1 hour mark. February saw two significant time saves. The first was a new clip found in Seaside Kingdom, and the second was a new route in the Sand Kingdom, each optimization saving around 4 seconds. With these new strategies, the race to sub 1 hour really started to heat up. Both Nykravita and Chaos Pringle were playing at least 10 hours per day. On February 11th, Nykravita hit back with a run of 1 hour and 11 seconds. 10 days later, he would then lower his record again by another 2 seconds. Then, something shocking happened. Lil Curbs, who had not achieved a world record since August of 2018, was on an astonishingly fast run. I'm not sure. This is too close. I don't think it is. It's gonna need to be retimed. I don't think it is though. He had achieved a one hour flat. Literally less than one second short of the sub one hour. It seemed like a 59 minute run was going to happen any day. A month later, Little Curb still held the record. Both Nykrovita and Chaos Pringle had lowered their personal best down to 1 hour and 2 seconds. The race was extremely close, and anyone's to win. But only one person can win, and indeed, on the 23rd of March 2019, someone did win. Heading into the final kingdom, the absolute legend Nykrovita was on the run of his life, and this happened. Yes, dude. Yes. Yes. Woo! <laughs> let's go, dude. Yeah, let's go. You did it. <laughs> let's go, okay. bro. Oh my god. Yes. I got it. Dude, it's a 50 minute. Nycro had clutched the run and scraped through with a time of 59 minutes and 59 seconds. A truly remarkable accomplishment. This was a big deal for the speedrunning community, and it was awesome to be a spectator throughout the entire process. Nykrovita did win the race, but this was definitely a team effort and many people were involved in developing new strategies to make this possible. This isn't the end of the Odyssey story though, and on the very same day that Nykrovita achieved the first 59, another completely new speedrunner did something that shocked everyone. But this isn't a story I'm going to cover in this video. If you want to know the full story of how Super Mario Odyssey has progressed, as well as learning about the people behind the glitches, clips, and strategies that were used, you should go and subscribe to Small Ant 1's channel. He takes a much deeper dive into Super Mario Odyssey and has tons of amazing content. Limcube has also created some fantastic Super Mario Odyssey videos as well, so definitely check out his channel. He has contributed a lot to the game and was also super helpful to me in researching this video. Links to both of these channels will be in the description. Thank you to these absolute legends for supporting me on Patreon. I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.